what it's like having that first sip of coffee if you're a coffee drinker just feels really good and so just having that silence and the first coffee it's just good welcome to the slow living collective podcast i'm amy wife mother of two and homemaker come along with me as i share my love for simple living growing in my allotment garden diving into what it means to be an urban homesteader and embracing life as a mother and homemaker Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. Today is episode 30. I can't believe we're on 30 episodes. How crazy is that? But those of you who have been long-time listeners of mine, you will know that every 10 episodes I take a small break just to rest, recuperate, record some podcasts, get ahead of myself, just taking time for myself. This podcast is called The Slow Living Collective and who am I if I don't practice what I preach? So you will see this page just ever so silently for a short period of time and then I will be back. I always batch ahead of time so you'll probably only have a couple of weeks without me and just a time for me to rest and recuperate. And it's so important and I know all of you guys appreciate that as much as I do. So today's episode, I want to talk about Sunday resets and yeah, I am excited about today's episode actually because doing a Sunday reset is perfect. If you haven't done a Sunday reset, I'm going to tell you all the ways in which you can do one even if you have a minimal amount of time. So let's get going. So Sunday, hands down, is my favourite day of the week. And I don't know if it's because I just get that really nice, relaxed feeling, or I don't know. There's just something about Sunday, and I think it probably stems from my childhood. Sunday was always a really relaxed day, and we always make it so as well. So if possible, I always try and make it so I spend some time at home. So throughout the spring and summer, the allotment is what usually lures me out because of the beautiful weather. And that's no bad thing either, though, because time outside at the allotment or in nature, it's just wonderful, isn't it? And it's never wasted. So like I said, today's episode is about the Sunday reset. And that isn't a new idea and it's not something I came up with. However, it is something that I implement in our home and in our life. And I have found that it creates a really positive start to our week. And so because of that, I thought it would be so wonderful to share on this podcast because I am here to share with you all the things that make me feel good in my slow little simple life over here. So if you're new here, hello, where have you been? There's 30 episodes for you to binge. How lucky are you? (laughs) But you might not know that in my family, we follow the turn of the seasons and the wheel of the year. We embrace each season as it comes and we try and live in tune to that as much as possible. Just tuning into what feels most natural. Modern life can be so fast paced and you'll hear me say this a lot here, but we tend to wear busy as a badge of honour. And Living more seasonally just allows you to just naturally connect with the ebb and flow that the seasons bring. Now, if you've listened to previous episodes, you know I've said this quite a lot because I have been trying to really feel out the seasons in my content this year. But did you know that in the winter it's completely normal to feel tired and sluggish and want to retreat inside your home? And did you know that it's normal for spring to feel like a bit of an awakening? In fact, if you've listened to a previous episode, you will know that I actually did some research on this and found that that's actually when New Year used to be. Who'd have thought it? That's when it feels most natural. These things we feel in the seasons are so normal and they are absolutely deeply rooted in us as human beings. But when it comes to a Sunday reset, mine looks different throughout the seasons. And I love that. Because I love that I can see that ebb and flow. But the same general ideas apply. So whether you have all day, a small window of time, or you want to change it throughout the seasons, you can still absolutely reap the benefits of what a Sunday reset can do to you. So before we go on, I should probably explain what a Sunday reset even is, right? And as with anything I talk about when it comes to slow and seasonal living, 
I am gonna presume that everyone's is gonna look a little different, right? We are not the same. We are the most unique version of our own little selves. We are not the same as anyone else. And so this is the Sunday Reset from my perspective. You can take the information that I give you here and you can put it into whatever works for you. Now, I like to embrace the slowness of Sunday and I also like to enjoy time with my family. I like to nourish my body and my mind for the week ahead and enjoy some relative peace while my husband is with our kids. And last but not least, I like to clean and organise the house so it feels fresh and ready for a new week. And where I can, when the season allows and the weather is good, I like to unplug and get outside in nature, at least for one of the weekend days. So if you've been looking to implement a Sunday reset, but you just don't quite know where to start, don't worry, I've got you. Today, we're going to dive into some simple ways that you can start your own Sunday reset, whether you have five hours or 10 minutes. Okay, so the first part of my Sunday reset is just having a slow morning. Now, I know some of you guys are out there in the trenches with me when it comes to having children. And children don't always want you to have a slow morning. So you might be laughing at this part. But I'm going to go ahead and share it anyway. Because not everybody listening has children. And to be fair, my children actually don't get up that early. So it actually enables a slow morning quite easily. So when I can and where it's possible, I make one of my weekend days a slow morning. And if at all possible, I make both slow, but I always try and aim for Sunday. And some of the things I like to do, I might have a bit of a read upon waking up. I don't immediately reach for my phone. I'll have a coffee in bed. My husband is a diamond and he will always bring me a coffee in bed on a weekend. And he always makes me my first coffee during the week as well. So I'm incredibly grateful for that because it means that wherever I am, I can spring into life and a coffee is waiting for me. And so a coffee in bed always feels like the ultimate luxury. Just a few moments of, you know what it's like having that first sip of coffee if you're a coffee drinker just feels really good and so just having that silence and the first coffee it's just good so sometimes I'll listen to some podcasts or music or just enjoy waking up and settling into the day in my own time now like I said I know this isn't always possible because if you have children who aren't really down for a slow morning in bed then none of this is going to be possible but maybe think of ways that you can adapt a slow morning routine to maybe suit you and your family and your children so what would a slow morning look like with your children could you maybe implement a morning basket or tray to engage them first thing if you've never tried a morning basket or tray it can be something that just includes like a book some toys some finger puppets just something that actually like inspires a little curiosity from them in the morning when they come downstairs or maybe if you're able you could set up a play tray that the first thing that they come down to is I don't know if you want to do messy play first thing but just some different ideas on things that you can just create for the children that could maybe keep them occupied while you ease into the day or something you could all do together could you maybe include them in the slowness of the routine that you have? Could you maybe read books together in bed? I know many children are very early risers, so if you're getting up at 5am, you probably feel like the least adaptable to a slow morning. But maybe just have a look in that routine and see if there are ways that you can actually start the day with a bit more slowness and a bit more intention. So another part of my Sunday routine is nourishing my mind. I, above everything else, taking care of myself is one of the most essential things that I'll do. And so where I can, I try and find some time to just embrace a little bit of what makes me me. And I find that this sets me up for the week ahead. As well as that, you know, I am a better person, a better mother, wife, daughter, everything. I am just a better everything when I have some time to myself. I am a full-time stay-at-home parent and to me, you know, I devote 
a lot of my time to my children, to my home, and just having these moments just for myself, even now while I'm recording this podcast, they feel so special. And just so you know, I'm recording this on a Sunday, so you guys are now part of the Sunday Reset. And I actually often record my podcast episodes on a Sunday. So just think about ways that you can nourish your mind. Maybe you might like to spend some time with yourself reading. That's something that I have a goal to do more of. I don't read enough. And I haven't read enough since I had children. And I'd really like to get back to that. I just sort of reinvoked my Kindle Unlimited membership. So I'm hoping that will inspire me to read. Although I have so many books sitting on my Kindle list. I don't even know why I need to put more on there. But that's me. Uh, something else that I like to include is a meditation and maybe a yoga session. Now, if you're new to meditation or you don't quite know how to meditate, there's no one size fits all. But I really recommend downloading the Calm app. And if you're able to, I'm not sure if you're able to access it on the free version or not. But if you're able to, go to The Daily J by Jay Shetty. It's a seven minute meditation that's every single day but you could just do it on Sunday if you wish and it's a really nice short session seven minutes is all it is and yeah it's perfect it's perfect to just start your day and uh, just guide you through a bit of meditation and taking these moments of stillness with yourself can just really improve your mindset as you go into a new week. Like I said, I like to try and fit in a yoga session if I can, just because that really does sort of help me sort of just stretch my body and feel a bit bit more myself. Uh, but I always do a restorative yoga session on a Sunday. Just everything, just slow and simple and inward. And another thing, for the Sunday reset is nourishing my body. Now, I just mentioned, you know, I love to nourish my mind, but nourishing my body with food is just as important. And I consider Sunday to be a perfect day for nourishment. So maybe you might want to make Sunday the day that you create the breakfast that you love. Maybe during the week you're always busy, you're running out the door, maybe it's a quick bowl of cornflakes or toast in the car or grab some food on the way to work. Maybe you feel rushed during the week and the weekend is just the perfect time to slow that area down. Create a breakfast that you love. Some people might opt for waffles or pancakes or maybe you're a coffee and croissant kind of person. Whatever makes you feel good, go with it because actually feeling good about something is actually a huge part of it. We also like to cook a traditional Sunday roast most Sundays and just sit down and gather as a family. In fact, I have recently just received a text message from my husband telling me that he is dishing up. So we make this as low-key and as simple as possible by utilising our slow cooker and we eat in the evening. And if you haven't tried slow cooking your Sunday roast and you're a meat eater, I'm here to tell you that you're missing out. Honestly, try it. You will not be disappointed with the results. Nourishing your body can be as outlandish as you like or as simple as you like. Just for me, it's just a simple coffee, a simple breakfast and we have lunch somewhere in there. That's sort of whatever. But uh, a, a Sunday meal where we can all gather together. These are just really simple ways that I get to nourish my body, but I also get to nourish my soul. Like... Honestly, food is so integral and so connected. And when you are able to view it in a positive light, it really does help your whole world. Now, this is the big one, organising and cleaning. Now, I know some people love to keep their weekends free from cleaning. And I totally get it. I really do. But actually, I really enjoy resetting the house on a Sunday. It just feels right. And so I know some people like to do it during the week, some people at the weekend, some people do like a little bit every day. I tried to do a little bit every day, you know, like they have those like mum cleaning things that is like a little bit every day, like one room at a time. And honestly, I feel like it's a little relentless. Like I don't want to be cleaning all the time. And so... I actually prefer to just get it done. Like, I potter around my house all the time. Like, you know me, just Amy, little urban homestead. I'm always in the kitchen and 
I don't know if you're anything like me, but my kitchen is a constant work in progress. It's it's a full time job just trying to keep on top of that room. So yeah, I just really prefer resetting the house on a Sunday. It feels great just to start the new week with things feeling clean and fresh and I honestly feel much more inspired when my space feels better and there's something about resetting the house on a Sunday and everything just feeling good when you get up on Monday morning and so if you don't ever feel like you've quite cracked the housework or if you feel like you're not doing it at the right time maybe Honestly, just give it a try as part of a Sunday reset and see how it feels because honestly, a nice, clean and fresh house on a Monday, there's nothing like it. There really isn't. So that's something I really like to do on a Sunday is just organise, clean up, just get things feeling tip top, ship shape and just wake up on Monday morning feeling energised and absolutely ready for the week ahead. And I guess the last thing that I tend to do on a Sunday is unplug. And I also, sometimes on a Sunday, particularly through spring and summer, I love to get out into nature. Now, I don't always achieve either of these, but I do try and include at least one of them as part of my reset if I can. So some Sundays I like to spend my time at home. I like to reorganize the house get it reset but also through the spring and summer you are most likely to find me shirking my responsibilities at home and heading off to the allotment and I just love spending time at the plot pottering around sowing seeds enjoying nature and just being at the allotment naturally has me unplugged anyway but when I am at home and spending a a Sunday at home I do like to unplug as part of my Sunday reset. I like to, I'm not really online that much. I'll tend to just be, you know, just in my own world. And I really like that. So whether I'm at home or out on the plot, I do try and unplug from the world as much as possible. And like I said, it's definitely easier out on the plot um, because, you know, I'm always busy doing something. And I tend to, like, in my world, content creator for like 17 years Everything is content. It's just a natural part of my life. It's so funny. I talk about this with my husband so frequently. Like, I always approach content like uh, I'm doing it anyway. So I might as well record it because I might be able to use it at some point. And so everything is content to me. And I don't even find it stressful. Content creation is just a massive love of mine. And yeah, so I am often filming when I'm out on the allotment, which actually means that my phone is busy recording and this means that I can't actually plug into the online world at all so I wouldn't know what was going on while I'm there but unplugging in general whether it's at home whether it's when I'm out on the plot it's just so wonderful I love that peace and time away from the world and it really does help me start the week feeling super refreshed There are really so many different ways that you can approach a Sunday reset and you can be as strict or as flexible as you like. But honestly, the main part about a Sunday reset is just to embrace, embrace home. And I always say that everything I do is rooted in home. My home is my sanctuary and, you know, we have had some problems in our home over the last almost two years now. Um, I think I've alluded to it before, we have like an outside problem with our home um, and we live in a split level flat so it's not necessarily our fault or our job to fix um, and that's been incredibly frustrating. At some point when it's all over I will share in great detail the trials and tribulations of living in a home with cladding <laughs> and our home, my home is like I say, has always been my sanctuary, and so it's been really difficult these last two years to actually feel as though I don't love it as much as I used to, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that because I still love my home, but we decided a while ago that when this whole business is over, we're going to move, and we actually said that we weren't going to move at all uh, and that we were happy here and we 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 are largely happy here 
But as time has gone on and, you know, this cladding issue has, you know, infiltrated our lives at every angle for nearly two years, you know, we decided that enough is enough. We just, we just don't want to be here anymore. But we are trapped here until we are physically able to sell once we have cladding back on our building. So it's actually, we're just in like this waiting phase at the moment. I don't know if you guys can hear my son, like... <laughs> He's squealing in the background. It's they're playing downstairs. My husband's down there, but I have the door shut. I have a really heavy fire door in my house, and that's shut. But alas, I can still hear him. So maybe you can too. He has just found his scream voice, and it is loud. So yeah, we are in a home that we obviously still love, but mentally, to some extent, we know that we're going to move. And to some extent, in that sense, I am like half checked out of my house. And so I'm still trying to find ways to embrace being home, embrace what I've got and know that more is coming and that we are going to find a new home and we have lots of wonderful plans. I have always been a huge proponent of just like living small and living with less and that won't change when we leave this place. We are just looking to not live in leasehold anymore and move to freehold. So we're looking for just a small little house, something that will suit us guys. You know, there's three of, there's, there's not three of us, there's four of us. There's four of us, our cat, just my, a space for my husband to work from home, space for the kids, space for me, a good kitchen and just, yeah, just enjoy still living our small, simple, minimal life and just in a different setting. So it is a challenge sometimes for me and so I am making even more of an effort with my Sunday reset to just embrace the home that we have now because prior to all of this cladding drama, it was, I loved my home so much. And I still, like I said, I still really do. Like, this is my home and it is my sanctuary. And there are things I love about it. There are things that irritate me a little bit. But I think once you start thinking like, oh, we're going to move. And in our situation, it's not as simple as we can just put our house on the market and go it's you know we are stuck in this situation until a certain point and then we can put our house on the market so we're talking about a while yet so it's a process but just making sure I still love this home for as long as I'm in it because like I keep saying home is my sanctuary and it's important that this place feels good so whether you have five minutes to do a Sunday reset or five hours, there are so many ways that you can implement some of these little things in your Sunday. And I promise you, when you try them, you I think you'll probably find that it makes the beginning of the new week just feel so much better, brighter and fresher. My Sunday reset changes through the season, so I'm sure I'll circle back and revisit this at some point. But for now, that's all I've got for you about Sunday resets. I would love to know whether you do a Sunday reset, what that looks like for you and, you know, what you found works best. Feel free to message me over on Instagram. You can find me there at Life on Plot 44. And while you're doing that... Would you guys mind leaving me a rating or a review about this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from, whether it be Spotify, Apple or anywhere else? If you could leave me a rating and a review, it is so helpful and it just helps this podcast rank up and just find more like-minded people who maybe need to hear the words of this podcast. That's all I ever hope for from these episodes, that these little episodes they just find the ears of the people that need them and in doing so just create this wonderful little community that we're creating i'm so grateful for each and every one of you and like i said at the beginning of this episode this is episode 30 so i am going to take my beautiful simple slow living inspired break and i will see you back in just a couple of weeks with some fresh new episodes and a new season of the slow living collective podcast Thank you as ever for listening and supporting me on this crazy little journey. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. And I will see you in the next episode.